right, welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host, as you know. And today I'm doing a quick look uh, at the brand new Audi Q4 e-tron. And I'm here with Robert of Brampton, of Audi of Brampton. How are you, Robert? Pleasure, Ken. Thank you so much for having us. Well, thank you for inviting me out to have a quick look at this vehicle. Um, Audi Brampton's one of the biggest Audi dealers across the country. And they've been, Robert's been out there evangelizing the EV message. Sure. I met you at a couple of EV events yeah. in the last year or so, so it's great to see that your dealership has really embraced EV. Maybe tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Brampton is one of the biggest EV markets actually in Ontario. A lot of people don't realize just how prevalent they are here, uh, which means we have to be very in the know on the cars, not just our own brands, as we do have quite a few cars in the EV uh, in the EV segment now, uh, but also our competitors, knowing our brands. Uh, that's the nice part about being in this new 410 Mayfield Auto Mall complex. Uh, there's a little bit of everything around here. <laughs> yeah. uh, you don't have to go very far to kind of take a look. So we better know what we're talking about, both with our own cars and our competitors. Yeah, exactly. So as I mentioned, I'm really happy that you guys have embraced electrification. And of course, you know, Audi, VW Group, all the brands, you know, uh, really, really starting to pump out some Definitely. EVs. And it's great to see some inventory Absolutely. starting to come because I know that's part of the challenge. Yes. But what have you seen from a clientele perspective in that shift to electrification? What do you see consumers come to you asking about? Yeah, I mean, obviously with the rising prices of gas and things like that, we get a lot more, even just over the phone calls, things like that. A lot of people just inquiring. And that's why we love having someone like yourself out here because, you know, some of the more simple questions, the more basic questions, we're always happy to answer. Uh, occasionally, as salespeople, we get a little bit too maybe into the nitty gritty. Mm -hmm. So it's great that we have someone like yourself that can kind of fill in those gaps. Mm -hmm. uh, basic charging things, letting people know that uh, there is a solution in an EV for you. It's not a yes or no question. Uh, yeah. A lot of people write it off before kind of asking maybe all of the right questions. Yeah. Um, but I mean, these cars are, uh, they just keep getting more and more technology, <laughs> uh, more and more advancements. And obviously working for, you know, uh, the world's largest car company, uh, Audi is going to put out a pretty good product in this segment. Absolutely. And your dealership is well equipped to handle the, the move to electrification. Absolutely. You guys have made the investments and in all Absolutely. that from a maintenance, serviceability, having all the right tools. It's a big, it's a big you know, number that dealerships have to put out to embrace electrification. And now that Audi is expanding the product line, so of course started with the original e-tron, then came with the Sportback version of that Correct. now, which is now the Q, remind me eight. of the, so the, the Q8. Q8 okay. e-tron yeah. we're gonna yeah. have call, yeah. launching uh, hopefully this year, uh -huh. uh, maybe a little earlier into next year, uh, yeah. but it's actually gonna be touting one of the longest EV batteries or the largest EV batteries uh, nice. in, in any vehicle right wow. now. Okay. So we are very excited to see that one coming, as you said. Uh, it's kind of going to be the predecessor or almost a redesign to the original e-tron. Yes. Uh, so a little bit of new styling and again we're excited to see the new range and some new features on there as well. Well now, now obviously you've come down in size which is great Correct. to kind of get a bit more mass market, Absolutely. bring the price down, yeah. more uh, usability in a small in a small to mid-size package. So we have the Q4 here which is uh, the newer. Now this is still based on the MEV platform, uh, just again, a nice solid package. What would you summarize this vehicle as? I mean, you know what, it's gonna be, it's uh, still a very usable and good size SUV. Mm -hmm. uh, still practical as far as it's not our smallest SUV that we make even on the combustion side. Uh, so it slots rightly in between what we would call our Q3 and our Q5 size. Yeah. Uh, so again, keeping the practicality of an actual usable trunk, even on the Sportback model, mm -hmm. um, full size uh, rear seats, car seats, things like that. So making sure that, again, as we like to say, electric has gone Audi. First we make it an Audi and then we make it electric. Absolutely. This is a great, I think, vehicle because it's a multi-function, as you said, not too big. Uh, great for, you know, families, uh, get around the city car, Absolutely. good range, and I'm going Absolutely. to go through some of the specs. So Perfect. any closing uh, comments about you guys and yeah, where you well, guys are going? Yeah. Again, we'd love to see anybody, any questions. Mm -hmm. We're always open to test drives. We really like people getting behind the wheel of these. Sometimes that's what makes the difference. Yes, uh, absolutely. Some of these EVs people haven't even had a chance to see with the wait times and things like that. We're always open to any questions. Uh, Ken and myself, please feel free to come see us. Yeah. 410 Audi Brampton. We're at the 410 in Mayfield Auto Mall. And I'll have the link to the website and all the specs here in the show notes as well. But yeah, it's one of it's nice to you know that you guys recognize that you need to have some product in stock Correct. for people to sit in, not only ergonomically, but to get get that sense of an EV, right? You Absolutely. know, and ask those questions. So Absolutely. So my hat's off to you. So thank you very uh, much, my Robert, pleasure. for allowing me to use this vehicle. Now let me go take a first spin and run through some of the details for the folks. Happy to see what you think. Thank you. Okay. Well, thanks for Robert to introduce the dealership and Audi's perspective, at least here, that they're seeing from clientele. Now, I do love the Audi products, uh, love the e-tron, both that and the Sportback. I actually like the Sportback design a little bit better than the non-Sportback version, but that's all very um, particular to you. 
what you like. Now the Q4 again does come in those two versions. Uh, this is a really good size vehicle. Fits four comfortably, five in a pinch, easy to maneuver, easy to park, all that kind of good stuff. Um, it's really a premium all-electric vehicle at a decent price point, and I'll get the pricing at the end of this. But just to give you some of the specs on this all-wheel drive version, if you're concerned about snow and Canadian winters, or you live in cold weather climates, you can certainly get that. Audi is known extremely well for their quattro all drive, four-wheel drive system. They know all-wheel drive systems hands down, uh, so this uh, will incorporate a lot of that knowledge into the way it operates. Those two motors provide 295 horsepower or 339 pound-feet of torque. Um, now ranges on these, um, they are pushed, the power is delivered and stored by a 77 kilowatt hour battery pack, uh, which is a good size battery pack for a vehicle of this class of kind of more of the compact SUV or CUV crossover utility vehicle. You get that mix here. Uh, almost everything nowadays is a CUV from some, for, for some reason, I don't know why. The range, the range decreases to 236 miles or 380 kilometers, and those are EPA ranges. What again? What I, we've seen on EVs, if you drive them normally, average, you know, just just go with traffic, right? Not booting around everywhere, you know, utilizing all that torque all the time. You will see uh, those numbers most of the time get exceeded, especially in the nice summer, spring, summer, fall temperatures. When you get in the winter, again, it's not uncommon for anybody to lose 20, 30 percent of their range. This has a proper thermal system. Does allow uh, fast charging as well for your standard um, level one, level two, you, it supports up to 11 kilowatts of charging and for fast charging up to 150. And that's where the Audi and the Porsche products shine is in their fast charging. They have really good fast charging curves, which means the overall charging curve on these vehicles is really good if you map that into a user experience, which means, you know, stopping for uh, 30 minutes, let's say here, Audi advertises five to 80% in 36 minutes. Those are very realistic at a properly equipped charger and again in decent temperatures where your battery's warmed up, all that kind of stuff. Now, um, you know, looking at standard safety suite and all this kind of stuff, it's got your 8S, it comes with, you know, your standard suites and optional for ACC and other things. This has a loaded uh, system, as I mentioned, I, I showed you the. I'll show you the interior coming up. Um, really nice 12.3 inch displays. I love that digital cockpit. It does support wireless CarPlay and Android Auto, and so I'm glad to see more OEMs support that. It's got lots of tech. It's got a hub. I mentioned the the, the Audi Connect app. It's got the nice Sonos stereo, touch displays, a virtual cockpit, all this kind of stuff. So it's a really really nicely equipped package and a different uh, a different price points on that. Um, just trying to see what else I can tell you about this for my quick notes. I only have this vehicle for an hour or so, uh, so I do appreciate um, Audi um, of Brampton letting me use that. Uh, you know, it's a great vehicle to expand the, the all-electric lineup from Audi to, because, uh, you know, all we see is a lot of big vehicles, folks, and I love to see smaller mid-size and below, you know, and compact to mid-size vehicles that are actually more affordable that people can use easily. This is easy to drive, easy to maneuver, park, all that kind of stuff. So I really like seeing that. Just a quick look at the interior. You know, I'm not gonna go through every nook and cranny, but as you can see, this is a well thought out vehicle um, with decent door pockets, maybe a little bigger to hold water bottles, but it's got a nice center console for that. Just the quality of materials is nice. You know, everything is really solid. I always love the Germans on their build quality. They just, they just know how to build vehicles, right? And this is the S-Line package, so it's got a lot of options on it uh, from that perspective. Really, really nice. Nice, beautiful steering wheel. Um, it grips really nice. Gotta love that futuristic style that the e-trons all come with, you know? So it's got a lot of uh, digital elements, yet there's still some physical buttons. I do like that. A good center console system, as I mentioned. Um, with uh, USB ports, nice cup holders, everything pretty easy. Really, really supportive seats. I haven't even played around with a lot of the settings there, but very, very nice. Let me turn that on the digital cockpit here. For a sec, here we go. So as we tells me that my door is open and all that kind of stuff, um, very, very nice. Everything's easy to understand. It doesn't take you long to figure things out. What's what, you know, for your driving controls, your music. Uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, cruise speeds are down here in a separate stock. Turn signals, windshield wipers, all that kind of stuff. 
Um, you know, very, very nice. Again, I mentioned the HVAC system. I love having separate buttons for the HVAC, easy to understand, all that kind of stuff. And then you have your main display here, which uh, I have to make sure the sound is down for you too, but all kinds of different things. Very similar to the Audi vehicles that we have on here. This is going to be running the most recent OS version of this uh, media, of this entertainment system, I believe. So really, really nice. Um, the glove box, let me see. Oh, really, really deep, big uh, glove box. So that's interesting to have. People like to store stuff. Again, nice center console here uh, with big cup holders. I like that and stuff for your phone, uh, USB charging ports, all that kind of stuff. Very supportive seats. Again, I haven't played around with it, but just, just the workmanship and the quality again it's it's just here you know gives you everything you need uh beautiful panoramic roof that opens as well as you can see it's a two two-part roof so it will open let some air in. it's pretty wide as well for the vehicle let's have a look at the uh the back seat here all right so this is the sport back version which has a bit more of a sloping roof line than the regular version um but again very nicely equipped passengers are going to be very comfortable this has the upgraded sono stereo system in it which i know is is a very nice system here uh, but again, you've got that flat floor, lots of leg room, a couple of USB ports, some heater controls, uh, you know, standard mat pockets, um, nice big center armrest here. Looks like it might have a pass through. So definitely room to relax in here. A very welcoming rear seat room as well. Again, um, nice finisher materials. Again, this being more of a top spec trim. Um, again, and that nice panoramic roof with the LEDs here. Uh, one thing I would have to do is put this down because it does kind of block the rear room when this is up. So I have to uh, lower this down after because I left it up. But, you know, you could certainly fit four comfortably, five in a pinch as well. So uh, nicely done uh, from that. All right, so let's see how getting into the rear seat is now. Again, this is the sport back, so it's got a, much, a little bit more of a slope to the roof. Sometimes the standard ones come out just that little bit more and kind of come down a little bit on an angle. Um, I like the door. It's not 90 degrees, but it's pretty close. Again, I'm always looking at how to, how is it built for easy entry exit. Again, for families as well, you got to put in car seats or this kind of stuff, kids are getting in and out. It's nice to have that. So let's get in here. And no, not bad at all. Not much of a duck. Grab handles here. Uh, tons of leg room. I've got the seat where I have it and I have, oh, two fists and a little more of leg room. I love the cutouts here. I put the seat up higher because I like to sit higher so I can put my feet underneath it if I'm in the, in the back seat here. It's a very comfortable seat, kind of con uh, conforms uh, to, to your back and holds you in snug. Yeah, five people would be tight back here. You'd be a little squish, but four is very comfortable. It's a nice, pleasant environment. I've got about a fist of headroom. I have about five, six, five, seven. So if you're taller, if you're six feet or more, you're going to probably have to slouch down a bit to, uh, to accommodate that. But otherwise, a very comfortable environment. So we'll look at cargo area. I'll put the specs up on the screen here because they don't have them handy. But a decent size uh, powered lift gate here, decent size boot space. Again, you can put, looks like it's got a 40-40-20 uh, type of uh, split seat situation. Or you can see different configurations to uh, put stuff down on. Some uh, holders here for first aid kit and some other uh, windshield washer fluid. Then underneath you've got a false floor here where you've got some space to put your mobile charger and some other accessories. It's a couple of inches so you can actually hold quite a lot in there which is nice. Again, easy liftovers. You're not lifting stuff uh, too high over here so easy for in and out. You can remove that partial shelf if you need to if you're going to carry some bulky items but it's a nice slim package and again very nice quality and everything works uh, very well all right give you a quick thoughts about the uh, audi q4 e-tron here i've been driving it just for about half an hour or so uh, it's a very pleasant vehicle to drive very comfortable love the supportive seats in this um, it's quiet as much as it's going to be quiet um, i think this still might have winter tires on it i didn't check um, but other than the tire noise, it's a very quiet, well-insulated vehicle. Um, the controls, everything is easy. It didn't take me long to figure out the dash, the menuing system, all this kind of stuff. Let's change some of the settings uh, for my personal uh, likes and dislikes, all that kind of stuff. HVAC, uh, I love the, the HVAC system because it's but got real buttons as well. So uh, it's nice to be able to have that on here. Um, turns really nice. It's got adaptive suspension so you can play around with the settings. Um, I think that I've just got it in normal mode right now and it's very comfortable absorbing the bumps that are there yet um, keeping the vehicle very steady. You know, I, just, I purposely went over a bump there just to feel um, how it is. Very, very nice. So, you know, just a quick 
I know half an hour is not a lot of time to kind of get a, a good sense of a long-term vehicle, but it's comfortable, it's quiet, the controls, everything's easy to get to here and understand, uh, seat settings, windows, um, got a nice, uh, I like the way the coffee um, cup holders are for down here, it's easy to reach, I like that. Um, this uh, console is nice, it's got USB ports, center uh, storage and all that kind of stuff. Just a really nice futuristic design course I'm always a big fan of the uh, of the uh, uh, cockpit um, digital cockpit that uh, the VW brands have you know you can change the looks and this kind of stuff always love that in a lot of the vehicles it's one of the main reasons I love the Eagle as well was for that digital DAC um, cockpit here so very functional lots of different things you can look at here again just from a drivability hey this is an Audi it's got that solid build quality it's quiet really easy to drive super comfortable seats absolutely love it Good job, Audi. Now, from an affordability, as I mentioned, uh, just mentioned, um, I did find my the base pricing on this. It starts at fifty nine nine fifty Canadian and goes up from there. I don't have pricing on the other models handy, but again, if I will put them here, insert them here, um, as I as I will try to find those before I uh, edit this show together. But you know, for sixty thousand dollars, it does qualify, I believe, for the five thousand dollar Canadian uh, federal incentive as well. So you get five thousand dollars off that sixty thousand. You look at your tax in all that kind of stuff you know you're out the door in the low 60s for a luxury um, you know a compact to mid-size uh, um, SUV or crossover vehicle with a lot of stuff in it I think that's a really good price um, you know this has a, a good play in the segment that it does play in in that premium all-electric vehicle again uh, offering good range really good features at a good price point for what you get all right, so in closing, you know, this is a pretty heated space, that, that smaller SUV, midsize SUV, CUV space. It's pretty heated from a competitor standpoint. You've got the Tesla Model Y, the Genesis GV60, the Lyric, and even lump in the Volvo XC40 or the C40 recharge products. Um, I'd say even potentially the ID4, but you'd have to get a top spec to get a lot of the bells and whistles, and it isn't as luxurious as the Audi as the Audi platform is, but I would put that in there and it's a pretty good price product as well based on that, again, MEB platform. So there is some good competition in this space. I'd love to see more. Uh, I know we'll see some more from VinFast and stuff starting to come into that space, into the smaller SUV space as well. So it's a very good product. I think it holds up well against those competitors. And as a recommendation, just from my quick um, you know, hour or so that I'm able to spend with this vehicle, absolutely would I recommend this. I've never been disappointed in anything that I've driven that has the, the four rings on it. They've always been very solid products. Um, and I'm glad to see Audi making more and I'm super excited to be looking at more of their products. So certainly recommend it. And if you're interested, as you heard Robert say, his dealership, and it seems a lot of the Audi dealerships are primed to have demo vehicles in stock so that at least you can drive them, touch and feel and do that important stuff, not just order online blindly without actually having to have a chance to, to drive it or see it. So I would definitely encourage you, if you're in the GTA, to um, uh, check out Brampton Audi. They're a really good dealership, one of the, the biggest ones that move a lot of electrified products and they know their stuff. So check them out or go see your local Audi dealership to get more information. Definitely. Again. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. A quick look at the 2023 Audi Q4 e-tron. This is the Sportback version. Again, I want to thank uh, very much uh, Audi of Brampton for allowing me the use of this vehicle for an hour or so. Um, just to give a quick look, give you my, my thoughts and, and perspectives on this vehicle. Uh, there are a lot of other more in-depth reviews. I encourage you to check those out as well, but I hope you found this helpful. Um, and uh, if I can get one for a longer term commitment, then I'll try to do that and follow up this with some more information on efficiencies and that kind of stuff. But it's a link to the dealership, of course, at the Audi's website will be in the show notes. So thanks very much for tuning in. All of my contact information and information about Patreon is coming up. Also, thank you. Thanking all those that support me on Patreon very much. And until the next episode, everybody stay safe. And I will see you when I see you. Take care and thanks for tuning in.